Hey, Craig here. So in this video, we're going to be exploring sheet metal bending, all right? So now I'm exploring a new line of products uh, that require uh, bending thin gauge sheet metal, like uh, 16 gauge or 18 gauge sheet metal, precisely with uh, sharp corners like this one right here. Now I have The Swag Off-Road press brake that I got. Um, I actually had them weld it because I'm not really good at welding. Uh, I don't have the springs on it right now. Now the prop, this is great for like thicker stuff, but the problem is it's not really well designed for tight corners. Uh, this is about the best corner that I can get on this Swag Off-Road in 16 gauge steel. So. Uh, I've been exploring other. I've been exploring other uh, ways of bending uh, that don't require you know spending tens of thousands of dollars on equipment. You know you can always um, get like a professional press brake, but you know they're like fifteen twenty thousand dollars plus the tooling is probably just as much. So. I was watching this one video, you know, I'll have to put a link, I don't remember the, the name of the uh, the channel, but um, he was showing that he actually made a press brake using something like this. This is actually a, uh, a press brake, uh, this is a, the Grizzly brand. It is a four inch, four inch vice brake. Uh, I guess there's different brands, but um, basically, it's a quarter an inch, quarter of an inch uh, a punch. I think this is probably like uh, 30 degrees on that. Uh, but yeah, this is basically just made to go in your in your vise. And I will show you the the bends that I've made with it so far here. Now I started off with uh, a 16 gauge steel. Not exactly the kind of radius that I'm looking for, but definitely better than the radius on the uh, the swag off road. But when I did try it in aluminum, it actually made a really crisp bend there. So I'm thinking if if I'm working with aluminum, this uh, brake may actually work. So, um, these are a few of the parts that I had bent up. These are just like test parts, you know. This is the one out of aluminum. So as you can see, pretty, pretty nice. Um, I'll move the camera over to my uh, shearing bent here so you can see how this thing works. I don't really have an open bench here where I can just mount this thing or use this, but uh, this is just the CNC vise uh, off the mill. I don't have like a regular shop vise. Um, basically, this thing has uh, magnets on it, and uh, you can see the profile there. Basically, you just mount one there and the other one on here, and that, of course, perfectly aligns the uh, the uh, punch with the die. And uh, it's actually easier to operate this when you think on its edge here. All right, we'll start with some uh, 16 gauge steel here. Just uh, put that in there. Obviously in the vise you can't, you know, get, you can't bend large pieces because uh, the vise, you know, so this would be better mounted in like a press or something but you just uh, put it in there and you just turn your vise if you're just bending a if you're just bending like a few pieces or something this might be worthwhile And you just kind of eyeball it. 
I usually kind of, I think the uh, the calculations are it's about in 16 gauge steel. I think there's a, about a two degree spring back. So I'll just kind of eyeball about two degrees. Pull that out. And, uh, and see that. Uh, I guess I didn't eyeball it quite good enough. All you have to do is put it back in there if it's not enough and just uh, bend the hair more. Um, if you over bend it, it's kind of hard to take out, but there you go. It's pretty good. So. Yeah, so that works, that works pretty good. Not in steel, not quite the radius that I need. Um, I think that's mainly because of the shape of the, the die here. It, it's just not really designed to get a real, real, real tight bend in steel. I'll show you another one in aluminum here. Grab a piece of, these are all, uh, all 16 gauge aluminum here. Okay. may have a little more spring back than steel. That's what I've noticed on uh, curving, curving steel or curving aluminum. So you can always like loosen it up and see where that's at. That yeah, looks pretty good. Before you even pull it out you can kind of see the angle as you've loosened it up. So Could have gone a hair more, um, but put that back in here, get a little more. Yeah, it looks like I've over bent it a little bit. Um, the radius on the aluminum is actually tighter than on the steel. So now what I'm eventually going to be making uh, with all of this is actually something uh, similar to this without these pieces on here and bigger, probably like nine inches by four inches. Uh, I just kind of crudely made these uh, just with what I had and I use a, 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 <coughs> a jigsaw actually to cut this. I uh, didn't even measure it very well, but just to get the idea of what it was going to take to make this shape, um, I kind of uh, roughly cut that up. Now, I've been talking with a distributor of professional equipment, um, you know, press dies, um, press uh, press dies, this is the die, this is the, the punch, actually. And uh, for my application for basically a... Uh, two foot length of this equipment, you know, broken up in different lengths and stuff. Uh, we're looking at about two thousand dollars just for the tooling. That doesn't include any of the uh, the the press or anything like that. So one day in the future, I may go that route. I'm not really sure, but um, this is kind of like a new product, so I don't want to put too much into it. So. Uh, the video, I will, like I said before, I'm going to have to post a link to it, but there's a, a guy on YouTube that took these and actually mounted a series of them, like uh, a foot and a half worth of these on a, uh, on a homemade um, press brake, basically. So I'm probably going to be doing something similar to that to start with. So basically, it's going to be something similar to this press brake from uh, Swag Off-Road. But, you know, instead of having this bottom part, uh, it's going to be something similar to this instead. 
and instead of this piece it's going to have this on here so it's going to be kind of like this um, I need to design the whole thing still and figure figure it all out unfortunately for the sizes of products that I need to make in the future I actually need 24 inches worth of uh, dies but the uh, the 20 ton Harbor Freight press is only 22 inches inside so I'm gonna need to get a, a larger press maybe a 50 ton I'm seriously looking at the the Redline series 50 ton they have an electro electro hydraulic and aero hydraulic but uh, that's not really in the cards right now, especially with all what's going on with the uh, social distancing and all that stuff. So I'm going to have to uh, make something out of these just to get the ball rolling, uh, prove the market, that kind of thing, and then move into the other stuff eventually. So in, a, yeah, in upcoming videos, I'm going to be going into the design and then, uh, and then start making the, uh, the new parts. Well, I've already done a quite a bit of research on all of this. Uh, this is like a whole new field to me. You know, I've been you know learning CNC machining for a little while, but uh, you know, this is a whole new thing. Uh, there's a lot to learn about. You know, the uh, the t the radius of the bend, um, the angle that you're bending it at, spring back, um, what. Uh, angle of tip that you need to use on the, the punch, uh, different types and shapes of punches, and all different shapes and um, sizes of the, uh, the die itself, like uh, the narrow the opening, the wider the opening, depending upon the thickness of the steel, what kind of uh, radius you want to get on, get on it. Uh, still a lot more to learn on it. Now what I'm finding is the trickiest thing to learn about all of this is actually um, interference with the die when you're bending. Um, that is, is when you're bending something and you're bending an adjacent bend like this way. The, uh, when you're bending it, the, uh, the interference with part of it, this is like if you're making boxes and stuff, interference with the, uh, the die itself. So you end up having to have longer fingers for it to clear. Um, I've tried, I've, I've looked into getting one of these, um, uh, what do they call it, the, the, the box brakes. You know, the kind that have the fingers that go down and you bend it up. But I think there's going to be a lot more versatility in actually going uh, the, the press brake route. Uh, I'm still kind of going back and forth on that, but I think I'm going to get sharper... Um, better bends and uh, like higher volume uh, than having to pull it up all the time so and more accuracy because um, there's a whole series of uh, products that go with these press dies like there's um, there's alignment um, products that go on here you know for like squaring for 45 90s there's a whole series of products that go on the back end for uh like a backstop um so i still have all of that to research and get into but okay so like i said in the beginning <clears throat> in the beginning this is kind of like an exploratory uh video uh basically things that i've been up to recently you know kind of things that i've been learning recently with this whole uh social distancing and what's going on and everything so uh, exploring new products and stuff so all right well yeah definitely more videos to come on this as more things I learn um, if there's anybody watching this that has uh, has experience in this kind of thing and want to uh, share your ideas and, and knowledge on the subject feel free to leave any comments down below uh, if you uh, have any questions or anything that maybe I can answer some questions about some of this thing feel free to ask them uh, down below but uh, so as part of this series of videos I'm actually going to be making some uh, machining videos uh, some things I'm going to have to learn how to do because I'm not really sure 
I'm going to have to probably make my own fingers because uh, these are too short. So I'm going to have to figure out how to machine fingers like this, probably like six or eight inch long fingers. So I'm going to have to figure out how to fixture that, uh, maybe on an angle in the vise like this and go this way or something. And I'm not sure whether I'm going to have to heat treat these or what kind of metal. I'm, that's still everything I'm going to have to, to work out. Um, I'm going to be creating a base. So, like I said, I still have to design it. For, they're probably going to be like a 22 inch base, maybe quarter inch steel. And then uh, some kind of rail on the bottom to hold these uh, on there. And of course, I'm going to have to have the, the guide rods attached to the to that, and you know, a brace. Uh, there's going to have to be a bar across the top to hold this in there. So there's going to be uh, numerous videos about uh, that whole process of creating basically something like this, but uh, you know, more accurate. Swag Offroad actually sells a, a finger brake version of this. Um, but I asked them, a bit, well, well, theirs is actually too short for what I need to do. But I already talked to them about that. They said their finger brake isn't designed for what I need to do, is what they said. But uh, So anyways, yeah, I'm going to make my own. Uh, it's probably going to be a, a relatively inexpensive one. Uh, since it's probably going to just be temporary until I can get a bigger press, but uh, so they'll they'll be end up being two versions of it. So, oh by the way, uh, this thing this thing from uh, Grizzly was I think it was like forty bucks. So, all right. Well, I hope everybody's been uh, staying safe out there. Um, yeah, my family's been pretty much staying home. I don't know. It's been like three weeks now, I guess. Uh, you know, I've, I've just been going out buying groceries and, you know, taking trips with the post office to, uh, you know, ship products and stuff. The occasional trip to the metal store. My metal store actually has like a canopy outside. We're not allowed inside anymore. Um, so, all right. Well, if you like this video, I'd appreciate the thumbs up. Uh, as I said before, and you feel free to leave any comments or suggestions down below. Um, Right, well, if you'd like to subscribe, there should be a subscribe button over here. Uh, we have a Patreon page if you'd like to support us over there. Uh, some other videos you might like to watch. And uh, as always, thanks for watching.